good to see all of you tonight, a special welcome to visitors and guests who may be here. Beginnings are important. They lay the foundation for everything that follows. The birth story of Jesus is a beginning and a very important one. No matter how many times you've heard this story, believe me, it always has something new and wonderful to give. This beginning helps us know how to look for God in our world and where love, hope, and peace can be found. We learn through this beginning how to look for God quite successfully if we follow two thoughts. And those are two thoughts I'm going to share tonight with a couple of examples of each. The first thought is this, that our Gospel writer Luke tells us that Jesus and God are often hiding in exactly the opposite place where the opposite person from which we'd expect them to be. And second, that God is often waiting to surprise us. Let's start with thought number one and talk about power for a minute. Our gospel story begins with Emperor Augustus tonight, the powerful man at the beginning of this chapter. He is so powerful that he can order anyone in his empire to go wherever he wants them to go, whenever he wants. To his people, the emperor was known as the Son of God, just as Jesus became known as the Son of God. So the Gospels ask us to make a choice. Who are we going to claim as our Son of God? emperor of the empire or Jesus. At first glance, it looks like the Emperor Augustus is the one with all the power in this story because he has the power to say the word and whatever it is he wants happens. Now, Onto this scene come three people who are the opposite of powerful. Mary and Joseph and their unborn child. <clears throat> Augustus's order of a census is a terrible burden for them. But they go to their native city called Bethlehem and find, well, that it's full. There's nowhere to stay and probably not much to eat either. I wondered this year what it might have been like had Emperor Augustus found himself in Bethlehem on a similar kind of night, a census-taking night when all the inns were full. What would he have done? Well, I imagine he would have had his officers clear out an entire inn for him alone to stay in. But Jesus' parents didn't have that kind of recognition. They land on the outskirts of town, in a stable or a cave, along with some animals. They are alone except for the animals, for the birth of their child. Who is powerful? Who is powerless? That's who we have to find out. And what about homes and homelessness? At first glance, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph appear to be homeless and cast off. And yet, in that stable, God's love was born as a helpless baby. Those who appear to be insecure, Jesus and Mary and Joseph, are far more secure, actually, than those who live in sturdy homes made of brick or stone or wood. In the stable, 
our little family has found a home made of love so that they take this home of love with them wherever they go and they are at home wherever they find themselves their home was God love within them so we learn to see from the beginning of Jesus beginnings that God often operates in exactly the opposite way than we people do God often values what we cast off, preferring powerlessness to an emperor's power. Jesus' birth itself serves to disarm us rather than motivating us to arms to protect ourselves. Those are a couple of examples of where God hides in our world and in this Bible story and how God is revealed and found in an opposite. Okay, on to our second thought, and that is this, that God loves to work through surprises. God loves to work through surprises. In the concluding story I'm going to share with you, the surprise for us may in fact be that sometimes Christians can learn just as much about Jesus' love from people who aren't Christians yet practice that same love, kindness, and compassion that Jesus did. This is a story, a true story, about a young Muslim woman who is a physician I heard her tell her story on a TED talk about that was entitled Reconciliation. She is a young doctor in a large medical facility working mostly within a team. She shares that she is often ridiculed, called names, and patients sometimes refuse to receive treatment from her simply because she wears a hijab. Her response to all of this was to smile and say nothing. She is a professional after all and knows that her services are needed, so she perseveres along her quiet path no matter what anyone says to her. Until one day, until one day, something happened that changed her life forever. This physician woman was the oldest sister in a family where there was also a brother and a sister-in-law and another friend was over one night. Um, they were all university students preparing to have dinner in their apartment. The older sister of the medical doctor was delayed at the hospital because she was seeing patients. When the family had moved into this apartment, their neighbors had said some very unkind things about them. But the Muslim family decided that their neighbor simply needed some extra kindness. So they went out of their way to treat him with kindness. Just before dinner, there was a knock on the front door of the apartment. The neighbor was there, unbelievably, with a gun. He opened fire on all three of the young Muslim students, killing them instantly. After the terrible shock of this wore off, our Muslim doctor and older sister decided that she could not go on in her life with business as usual, simply smiling and saying nothing when others ridiculed her faith. 
Her opportunity to act upon her new resolution came quickly. The medical team she worked with walked into a room one day where a patient blurted out to her, your people are killing our people all over the world. The doctor sat down on the edge of the bed. She took the patient's hand in her hand and said to her, in the days that I have been treating you, have I ever acted with anything other than kindness to you? Have you ever not received from me personal care and compassion and the best medicine that I know how to, to practice? The patient took her hand away and said, I'm sorry. I should have known better. You see, I'm a Mexican, and I receive bad treatment all the time, people calling me names. And I should have known that they do the same to you, and it wasn't right. In a world in which hate thinks that it often has free reign, where we think that we can say whatever we want to anybody at any time, no matter how hurtful it is, the actions of the young Muslim doctor are powerful because they so match the actions of the man we know as Jesus the Christ. We need to be open because God can use anyone she chooses to share her message with others. Where will Jesus show up next in your life? Perhaps later tonight in bread and wine or in your neighbor's eyes as you share the peace or perhaps on the cover of a Time magazine showing a little refugee baby born in a refugee camp. This much we know for sure. Jesus will find his way to us on a surprising path, often hiding exactly where we think he isn't. He promises, though, that all who seek him will find him. And that is the promise of Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen.